So for today's session, we're going to be painting this scene and this caught my eye a few weeks ago. And at first sight, it, it may look as though there's, there's, there's not a lot going on here, but there are certain qualities that this picture has that I uh, really caught my eye and really made me want to paint it. And first of all, um, the colors. Uh, it's you can see the long shadows uh, across the fields and this beautiful gold um, of, of, of the field that's just been harvested. These wonderful hay bales in the centre and in general the composition is something that I, I, I really like. It looks simple but it, it has qualities that I really like in a composition. Um, and maybe I should I should I should go I go through how I have learned through huge numbers of trials and, and a lot of error how to go about simplifying a picture and it's not quite a recipe but it's a set of guidelines that really help me when I'm I'm trying to simplify a scene and make it work as a painting um, and and this one kind of embodies embodies these so what I like to do when I'm confronted with a scene like this um, there's a lot going on, there's the hay bales, there's the field, there's this foreground, there's all these little trees, there's these houses, shadows, complicated cloud shapes in the sky. Um, I try and strip back as much of that as possible and break down the picture into a series of maybe three or four big shapes and a lot of people will recommend you do this. Um, and for each shape, and it doesn't mean things, I do mean shapes. I don't necessarily, they don't need to be individual trees or groups of trees or anything, um, just shapes. Each shape, I, I assign it a rough value. And so let's go through that and let's break this down. So the first big shape is usually the sky. And it's the lightest value. And it's an overcast sky, pretty much. Um, so it's going to be quite light. Uh, when we come and paint it, it's a lot of clouds in here. I think we might actually make this a blue sky with some with some white clouds in. Um, but that's our first big shape. It's light. Uh, it's got slight value changes within it. And that's kind of the, the, the rule I, I, I try and keep to is that once I've identified my big shape, the value changes between inside that shape are going to be quite small, and that will help to hold the whole pic, hold uh, hold blah, 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 help to hold the picture together. So that's our first shape. The second shape I'm going to say is this foreground piece here. It's a glorious color, and if we take away the bales for for um, a minute, it's pretty much the same value. They've got these little darker pieces, this lovely diagonal cross here, which with these shadows gives us this wonderful Z-shaped composition. But that's pretty much the next big shape, and it's the next value up. So this is the lightest, this is the next lightest. There is a definite value change there, and we need to remember that when painting it, otherwise it'll look uh, just washed out. The third shape, are these trees here and to this side. Just forget about this bit in here for a minute. And these are going to be basically painted pretty much as one shape, but with slight value changes uh, within that shape to indicate that the, you know, the branches and the light and the shadow side of those trees. And a little hedge along here, which we should put in as well. And that's a very dark shape. That's the darkest shape we have in our picture. So that's three shapes, sky, foreground, trees. Now the final shape, and this is really quite important to make it hang together, is what I call the detail shape. And it's, it's often the center of interest or the focal point, but in this case actually it's, it's slightly different. So our detail shape are these little houses, these little roofs here, and it comes out sort of this S shape with the includes the bales but a lot of the detail is back here and this will have we don't I don't assign this a value because there will be a lot of contrast in there so we're going to paint them shape by shape and pretty much this last detail bit will be uh, the last thing we paint 
And you'll be surprised, well, I've always been surprised that if you do this and you simplify most of the big shapes, but concentrate on your detail shape at the end, you don't need much detail in these areas. In fact, if you've put too much detail in, it overwhelms the whole picture and you will lose what, what the sense of it is. So let's have a look at the drawing. I was very, really quite sketchy with my drawing. We can be quite, quite loose with this drawing. So this is obviously our most important thing, which I put in a bale. I roughly put in our trees here, which will be very dark. I put in this diagonal here, which is very important for our composition. This line across here will tie everything together. Um, I put no detail in the foreground. We'll just do that wet in wet. No detail in the trees. I put in a couple of houses. Um, it's actually quite hard to see in the photograph what, what's going on. So I basically just made stuff up. And um, the final thing, which will be very important, which I haven't drawn, are these shadows. These shadows are really important. And they will be almost the final thing we do that tie this lovely sedge-shaped uh, composition together. And I haven't drawn these in because I don't want those pencil marks at the edges. So we're going to have to do those by eye. OK, so let's get painting. Err, sky, right. Now, I'm going to use um, a nice big quill brush for this. And this is going to go in really quickly. Um, it will be quite surprising how quickly this goes. So we've got to be ready and plan it out before we do anything. Now, in the picture, the sky is kind of cloudy, uh, but I think I'm going to do a sort of blue cloudy sky just to just to sparkle things up a bit. And I like to use cerulean for my skies. It's got lovely granulating properties. Um, and it's it's a, a greenish blue, but it's not too bright, and it blends really well on the paper. So let me get a bit of scrap, which I should have got out before, and I forgot. Okay. Just a bit of cheaper student paper, just to test some colours on. Now it's going to be light, we said this is our first shape, and it's going to be light, but we're also going to put cloud, uh, we're going to put the blue sky on, and then blend the edges to make our clouds. I actually think that's fine. Now I'm using pure cerulean here, you don't have to use cerulean, cobalt would do. Um, I might just add in just a little touch of burnt umber just to take just to take the edge off that blue slightly just slightly yeah it's we don't want it to be too overpowering now she's putting more blue back in but we do want it to show up as a blue sky okay that's good. I need another table around here to rest my other bits of paper on. Now, I'm going to have to work quickly here and we need to plan. So, we're going to put our blue bits of the sky in pretty much in two or three strokes. We're going to have, there's a blue bit at the top, there's this piece that comes here, and then blue across here. And I'm going to make sure I go through that tree top there because I want to tie the tree into the sky. And again, it's a kind of a, an S or a Z shape. And I'm going to leave the edges of the clouds quite rough. And then while the paint is still wet, and it's very important that the paint is still wet, I'm going to go back in and soften those edges. We're going to work on dry paper. Right, so let's go in. And here I'm going to go through that tree. Right, now I'm going to wash out my brush really quickly. Just dab it on a piece of paper towel and I'm going to go in and soften these edges, these quills. Soak up so much water. I'm going to
just softening these edges. I might, I think I've messed up here. I always seem to be messing up. <sighs> always messing up. I think I need to practice my skies a little more. It's going to look messy, but it doesn't matter. In fact, almost messy. Messy is good. Now, just going to add in a bit more pigment. It's not particularly even, but I don't think that will matter. Always oh, is this a shame? Always, <laughs> always the same. As soon as I put the video camera on, I mess up. Right, now I'm fiddling with it, which I really shouldn't be doing, so I'm stopping fiddling with it. It's going to be a bit blossomy up there. It's not going to be a beautiful, even sky. But it's going to be okay, because the rest of this is going to be really quite strong. I'm actually going to go in and just take a little bit of colour out there. So I should probably have the courage of my convictions and not fiddle with it, but apparently I don't have the courage of my convictions. And that's pretty much it. We just leave that to dry and then we can come back and put in everything else. It doesn't look like much at the moment. I have to be, you have to have faith that it's gonna work. Right, so that's our sky. Oh, it went quickly. And now we're going to do our foreground. Now, we have to make more decisions here. If you look at the bales of hay, the edges of them are lighter than the, uh, the harvested field. So, we could paint them separately and try and paint round them. Uh, and paint this a slightly different colour to that. We could do that. Or, and this is what I think we're going to do, is we can paint over the whole foreground with basically this colour. And then come back in when it's dried and then wash over around these areas. So we build up this colour that's richer than this one in two layers. And I think that will give us a better effect than trying to separate these completely. Okay, so, so what colour is this going to be for the first layer? Let's have a look. And I'm going to use, I'm just going to change brush to a, a 12 round and get my this paper up. It's a yellow. I think we can be agreed on that. And it's probably closest right now to yellow ochre. So let's get some yellow ochre out. Now it's not pure yellow ochre, it's fairly bright, but yellow ochre is going to be much, much too bright. It's definitely not that colour. And if I get my colour isolator over and put it over that, yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really actually quite grey. So I'm going to grey this down by a little bit of black. And it's going to be quite light. Right, so that I think is probably, it looks dark on there, but if I put, I think we're pretty close. I'm gonna need more than that. So let's load up the wells, put it black. And we're gonna layer this so this won't be the final value bit more and if it is slightly off color wise right yeah so it's just taken the sort of the, this is pure yellow ochre it's taken a punch out of it and I think it's a much more interesting color right so let's go 
I'm hoping I have enough on here. And we're just we're just gonna wash through. This is gonna be green, so I've got to avoid that, but pretty much everything else is gonna go to this colour and we're gonna go quite quickly again. And these little sparkles are fine. I am just gonna dab in this bale. So the ones that poke up we should paint. And leaving hopefully a nice bead of colour. I didn't have nearly enough paint there. So I'm going to leave that a nice bead there and just whip up some more. I should have used my quill. Definitely should have used my quill. The black. There we go. I think I think I managed to escape that. I'm just adding a little bit more black down the bottom. It is stronger down the bottom. So I just want to give it slightly more punch. When we come in to do the next layer, we will definitely give it more punch. Here we go. And it looks quite strong, which is good because we want it to contrast with the sky. Could maybe have been a little grayer. Let's have a look at this picture. No, no, maybe not. Maybe we're okay. Now, before it dries completely, I'm just going to put a bit of texture into this foreground. I'm going to take my spray bottle, which is just water, and just gently spritz this. You have to judge this. It has to be just the right dampness. I might put in some Put in some splatters while we're here too. And these are going to be a bit darker. So a bit of burnt umber, probably a bit of ultramarine. Now you can use a palette knife and or you can just use your fingers and tap tap the brush. And it's drying while I'm futzing around here. And it'll look quite strong. But it will dry back enormously. Right, I'm just doing little ones. If I use the palette knife, they're smaller, which will give you a bit of perspective as though it's going back. It's dried up there, so I'm going to stop. And while I'm here, there are some diagonal lines going across here, so I'm just going to drag through just a few diagonal lines. Hopefully that should be, that should be wet enough, it'll disperse. It will look really strong, but as long as it's wet, and your paper, your dark paint that you're using isn't too thick. It will be okay. Let's spray this, just disperse these a little bit more. Right, okay, right, I'm just gonna put this on pause because we now need to let it dry before we can go in and do anything else. We're gonna go in and do the trees. We could theoretically do go in and do the trees, but I have a tendency to drag my arm across the whole thing, uh, which will not do it any good whatsoever. So I'm gonna put it on pause and come back in 10 minutes or so. Okay, so now we're back and we've dried and pretty much dried. And as you can see, this, this dark stuff is really dried back and it's still uh, 
looks quite noticeable but we haven't put any of our darks in yet any of our detail bits so um, it should be fine now I'm just having a look at it you want this to be a nice value contrast between here and here and I think there will be this will be a light bit of our bales I'm just gonna check with my color isolator huh? so it's I think it's slightly too yet slayer. This is greyer, but I think we'll, I think we'll be okay. I think it will it will hang together okay. Um, right. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to do our trees. We're going to ignore pretty much ignore this bit, little bit of tree. Maybe this will be our detail shape that we do at the end. We're going to put in our dark green for our trees. This is going to be a separate green, so we must remember to, to paint over that. Right now, I'm going to go to a slightly smaller brush. This is a 10 round. And our trees are dark, but I think we'll probably do them in two layers. Uh, our first layer will be really quite dark, um, and we'll let that dry, and then we'll come in with an even darker layer so we can put in the shadows of our trees and underneath these hedges. You can see this, this sort of the light side of the trees is dark green and the shadow side is an even darker green. We don't need to go as dark as the photograph but we do want to have it dark so it provides a nice contrast between the foreground and also the sky. So let's mix up a green. Now I'm going to use a mixture of, this is Hansa Yellow Light, I think, or a, a Cadmium Lemon or a Lemon Yellow will do here, not an orangey yellow. It's a little bit more water just to make that flow. And I'm going to add in some black to turn it green. We may need to put in a little bit of blue maybe two olive green. I'm being tentative with my black because it can go all of a sudden uber black. I do want it to be quite dark. All right, just a little bit more water just to make that paint flow on the palette. And my swatch paper. Have a look here. Right now, that's gonna. It looks dark. It's gonna go up there, but I think that actually might be slightly too light. So it's a little more black. Try and get it right on the first go through with this. I know you, you can always have in the back of your mind. Yeah, well, I can always go back and do it again. Going to need to make up some more of that but let's use this so we're going to start at the left hand side i'm right-handed so i like to try and remember to go left to right and we're going to put on our trees and we're going to be very broad with this use the side of our brush to get a nice broken edge so let's go i'm just going to start by going around this bale because i don't want to paint over the bale Like so, and then we're going to go up just the side of the brush, trying to keep. I'm trying to keep these edges of the trees really rough and irregular. It's very easy to make them like little lollipops, and I'm leaving a few sky holes, but only a few. You don't need many. And I'm trying not to go back in to the paint once it's down. Now that looks very dark, but I think it's going to end up light. All right, and I'm going to come across, keeping this horizontal. And if it's dragging across the paper and leaving a few white sparkles, that's fine and just using the side of the brush. I'm not trying to make them look like trees. I'm trying to keep them irregular. I think some of my holes are a little large. 
It's easy to overdo the holes on these things. Pulling the brush across the paper. Now I've got a house in here, so I'm going to stop just, just before that and use a damp brush just to just to soften out that edge so it's not hard. Alright, let's mix up a bit more paint. Now I've got, I think it's a nice colour. Because we haven't gone back into it, it's the pigment is blended together on the paper to give a nice varied effect. Alright, get on the black. At this point, my brush slips and I end up with something ridiculously dark. Alright, smidgen more water here. Yeah. Right. Now we have our I'm gonna leave this bit of bristle coming out. But we are gonna put in there's this little roundish tree here. Try and make that nice and irregular on the edges. Even use little dots if you want to. And there's this tree here which is really quite raggedy. So I'm gonna try and I'm gonna abuse my brush here. My poor brushes will cry. Yes, to get some irregularity in there. Sometimes just lightly putting your brush almost parallel to the paper, just slightly dragging it across gives a good effect. Right, and I'm going to come down, not quite to here. We're going to put in detail in here later. Mm. Here's this. I'm kind of, the photo is basically just giving me rough guidance here. Now we've got these roofs down there. So if I pull across, I'll make sure they stand out and that's the green field there. I'm using a paper towel just to take some of the pigment off so I can get a nice irregular edge across here. Now there's this hedge and that's quite flat here. But the tops will be irregular. Little Bob Ross trees here. And something a little broader. Now I've got quite a few white bits. Now I definitely need another layer. It looks pretty good now, but I think uh, once the rest of it is in, you'll realise that we do need some more darks here. I'm just going to go in with a, a damp brush and soften that edge. I don't want that to be too hard, I don't think. A little bit of colour down here. Just so, so it's all tied together. Okay, that's looking kind of cool. I like it. And the sky is coming into its own as well, even though it wasn't the smoothest wash ever. All right, this little green piece here, I like this green piece, this field back there very much. And it looks like really quite a bright green, but I think we will find that it's not. So let's try mixing up 
a green for that. I'm just going to clean my palette. There we go. Now, where's my car? I see. Yeah, it's, it's quite dark as well. So this is a this is a neutral grey here. This green under here is definitely it's definitely a four in the value scale. If this is a five on the grey, it's definitely a four. But it's it's a yellowy green. It is quite a yellowy green. So let's start with yellow again. Now, if I put in some, I've actually got cobalt as my greenish blue. Now that is a really bright green and it's tempting to use that but it will be both too bright and too light I think. Let's just try that. Oh boy yes yes far too light. So it's too bright and it's too light so let's grey this down with a bit of black. And it might look too grey, but no, that's not going to cut it. Oh no, that looks too dark. But I don't think it is. I'm just going to add in a little more yellow. I think it looks kind of dull actually I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to risk this and see what it looks like now on our photo we have these little roof bits there's this wall coming out so I'm just going to pull this across in a pretty even wash as few strokes as possible That little pail. There we go. Uh, and that looks, I mean, now it's down on the paper, that looks pretty good. Some little sparkles up there, which I think I'm going to keep. And yeah, I think, I think that came out quite well. Okay. It's really quite an important part of the composition, there's that little kick of colour back there. Makes all the difference. Right, now, what should we do next? Oh, I know what we should do next. We're going to have to tackle this foreground again, because remember we said that this was going to be the base colour for the light parts of the bales, these parts here. We now need to put another wash over this just to slightly darken around them so they stand out. Now, we have to be careful here. Because we have to be careful here because we don't want it to be too dark because it will look like the bales are pasted on bits of cardboard. We don't want it to be too light, otherwise it won't have any effect whatsoever. So, let's have a think now. Ah, I just splashed myself everywhere. Right. We're going to use pretty much the same colour as we used before, which was uh, yellow ochre. I'll try and make up enough this time. Yeah, thankfully, yellow ochre is very cheap. And some black to give us this kind of sludgy. Now that's going to be far too dark, so let's add in some water there. And we want this to be quite fluid. I want this to kind of really wash over the foreground. I don't want it to go on like Marmite. That's, that is going to be, I think, slightly too bright. As we come down to the foreground again, we probably will darken it up again. Right, just a little more water. And I think, I'm hoping this will work. Now, this is another case. This is kind of the, the watercolour 
scenario we have to put it on fairly quickly but we are also going to paint around all these bales so we have to be quick and yet precise at the same time so let's go going left to right again now I'm going across and underneath and across that one I'm going round these little ones back here you don't have to be absolutely precise because they are not they are not the main event of the picture. This one's the main event. If we if we mess this one up, yeah, all bets are off. But these little ones are fine. If this one looks fine, the rest of them will read like bales too. Right, I'm painting around them. Just doing some little chops up into that detail area. Right now here we have roofs. And bales. Right, um, this is. Don't want this to dry and get stripy. So let's go round and across. Being careful around these. Now this one being connected to that one. This little one round the back is another important compositional. part of the picture. I've got a little stripe there which is annoying. Right, I'm going fairly quickly and I'm failing to talk coherently because I'm concentrating. Right, let's go back. Oh, I didn't paint these. Oh, I'm going to have to fix that later. Right, and surround the edge. And across, and then use the rest of it. Now, these may look a little stark at the moment. A bit more pigment. It's too much. We do want it to be quite strong. It will dry back lighter, of course. I'm thinking maybe it should have been a little bit strong, but it's down now, so we're going to have to make the best of it. Make this strong down here. Okay. Okay. Now, I think. It's, you can see it's drying quite a lot lighter. I'm going to put again a little bit of spray and a bit of splattering on this foreground. I'm hoping it's. It has to be just the right dampness. If it's not damp, it doesn't have any effect. If it's too damp, it just disperses out. Uh, this for a little bit of a little bit of interest down here okay I'm tempted to put some stripes in Let's see if we can do that Yes. To put the stripes in, they need to be thick enough pigment that it won't, uh, you won't get blossoms, but thin enough so that it will spread a little. Alright, yeah, it's slightly too dry at the top. 
Right, and another quick spray and a pretty dry brush. I'm just going to pick up this pigment down the bottom. It's just a brush that's had all the water run out of it. And so it will just soak up everything that's fallen to the bottom. Okay, I think I think I'm good with that. I think I'm happy. Ah. Let's just tidy up these edges. I tidy up the edges because, as I said before, I have this tendency to start pulling my arm over the whole thing. Right, I'm just going to stand back and see what it looks like. Yeah, I like it. I was slightly worried it was going to be too strong, but no. I'm good. These look weird right now. Uh, but we're going to go in when this is dried and put in some shadows on, on these and they won't look weird anymore. I'm saying that confidently because I'm not completely sure that's going to be the case. But it's as with so many other things with watercolour, if you think it's mm -hmm. slightly too much, it's probably just about right. And at the moment I'm thinking it's slightly too much. Clean you up a bit. All right, so this is drying. I think I think I can trust myself not to mess this bit up. So let's let's start and put in some shadows. We're going to start with this one because this one needs to be right. Once this one is right, we can do basically what we like with the rest of them. Now, so let's go do. This shadow is very brown. I put this over here, very brown. See how dark it is? And it's brown. And under here is also really quite brown. And if you can see, there are little shadows coming out because the sun is behind those trees. And that will also help to anchor them to the ground. So let's have a look at this brown. I'm going to start with some burnt sienna and put in a little bit of ultramarine and it's going to be brown but I, this is really quite an orangey brown I'm not going to uh, yeah maybe slightly more burnt sienna and we have a bit of colour down there so we don't want to make it up to be Absolutely, that colour. That's not right, is it? But it has got to be fairly dark, which means the consistency of your paint has got to be like sort of single cream, um, light cream. Sorry, I went I went back to the UK for a minute there. Right now. Right, I'm going to go with that. It's, it is lighter. But I don't want to push it quite as dark as the photo. So let's try this now. I'm going to put on this side of the shadow. We're not putting any detail in here. And the bales are slightly flatter at the bottom. And then, and you're going to need another brush coming in here. The bottom of it has also got a shadow. So I'm just going to put a little bit of colour up there. And then with another clean damp brush, Pull this colour up to give it some shape. And while I'm here, I'm going to pull 
pull this shadow out. So you can see it just skating across the field. It's going to soften some of those lines. I don't think they need to be too too straight and rigid. I'm just going to soften underneath. This is looks kind of bit just a little little too sorry I'm thinking so my words go away just and I'm just gonna smush I don't think this is dark enough a little bit of detail on these and it's up here slightly darker around the edge Now I'm thinking, is was this dark enough? Uh, uh, which one was my uh, which one was my painting brush? Which one was my smoothing brush? All right, I think we might need to come back in and darken that down a bit, but maybe not. Okay, so that's our first one done. Let's do the rest of them. Now these, the rest of them don't need to be quite as precise. In fact, a little, a little bit of imprecision with these back ones will make them read better. So, and I'm not, I'm not putting in any detail. I'm just putting in using the same color putting in marks where the shadows are, pulling out some of those cast shadows onto the field. Yeah, I think that's working. It's, 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 it really was touch and go for a while, but I think that's working. This one's important. Right? Hopefully this, hopefully this is dry enough, it won't bleed. Just this shadow side is just, just touching the back end of that front bale. And brings it out into relief and also brings that front one forward. There we go. Da -da. Da -da -da -da. And this one over here. So I'm getting kind of blase with these ones now. This one doesn't have a shadow because it's in shadow. There's this one here. And this one. Like so. In fact, the more you put in of these, the more the more they actually read how you want them to read. The repetition helps. Just putting these back ones I forgot to paint in the first place, which wasn't good. should still read as bales. Okay, now I am going to stand back and just have a look. Yeah, I think they could have gone a little darker on their shadow sides. Well, that's okay for now. While we're here on the foreground, actually, should I just put it, I'm just going to put a tad more colour here. Just at the bottom. <clears throat> Just to beef up that front one. 
it probably should have a bit more a bit more presence than the others okay yeah that will do uh, while we're here uh, one thing that's important compositionally is this line here which I presume is, is separating the fields it's just a a little tufty bit of ground that we need to put in. It's got some green in it too, so we need to make up sort of a green, maybe drop some brown into it. So let's go back to our green. Which is kind of brown at the moment. Let's add in a little black. Right, okay, and it's fairly it's fairly thick because I'm gonna go and place it on. I'm gonna use the side of the brush. And we're gonna have our other brush ready to soften some edges. So I'm not putting a full straight line, I'm I'm leaving little gaps in there. So I'll put that there. It's obvious it's it's obvious it's uh, let's soften these edges and maybe slightly underneath just in places just touching I like this wateriness happens with this kind of line and this line is, is purely compositional put this bit on and go across here now it's getting further away so it's going to get slightly smaller uh, I'm exaggerating that a bit but I think that's fine again I'm just going in and just softening this line so it it's blending out. It's not particularly realistic. It's, it's, but it gives such a lovely effect on the paper. It's what, and I kind of actually like the fact that you can see where my brush strokes have been. So there's one thing that's just annoying me here. Just slightly. Yeah, I, can, I do kind of like that. I think some of these might need punching up a little, but I'm going to leave that to the end. All right, now, how are we doing for time? 53 minutes. Okay. I think we're looking okay. I think we're looking good. I'm happy. I mean, it doesn't mean it will all go terribly wrong. Or won't go terribly wrong, rather. Let's have a look at this detail piece. I'm just going to clean this off. Now, the detail piece. We have to be careful here. We don't want to make it too rigid. We want to put marks in that make it look as though there's stuff happening back there. But we don't want to explicitly put in you know, rigid lines and things and telegraph poles and whatever but we do want a bit of color i think we want to put those roofs in first and i'm going to make them a kind of orangey red i think now we can't use that this is pure vermilion or you could use something like cadmium red or naphthol red and i've lost my oh yeah that's my swatch piece it's going to be far too bright straight out of there yeah, we're not going to do that. I'm going to grey it down. I'm going to grey it down quite a bit. And even though I think I've greyed it down, I might even have to come back later. And Now, you see, I'm thinking that's that's too grey. I could well be wrong there. Right, let's try that for a roof colour. Very different to that. And now... I'm just going to put in a stripe along here for these roofs because we can come back in for the 
the shadows and layer that over the top. Maybe just a little bit down the other side. And then we have this roof here. This roof here. And these are just triangle shapes and parallelograms. Okay, let's put that in. They look kind of stark, so let's try and muss these up a bit. Let's put in some walls. Let's put in some walls. Yeah, let's put in some walls. I'm going to make my walls kind of bluey grey. This is just a bit of cerulean. I'm just... No, that's not, that's not going to work. A bit of cerulean, just a smidgen of burnt umber. And if my roofs are still wet, I don't mind. Let them blend. Let them blend. That's this piece down here. It's just the end. I don't know if it, I don't does that actually exist. I don't think that actually exists. Well, it does now. Now, okay. Just put a little bit under here, just because it will be in shadow under there. And I'm going to leave that. I'm going to put the trees around the houses in. And this is just going to be our usual dark green, uh, hence a yellow, and some black. And that's far too wet. I should be cleaning my palette out a bit more. But... Alright. I want it to be fairly stiff and fairly dark. Dibby dabbing around here. Okay, okay, that's better. There's that's a nice consistency as well. Now I'm hoping my roofs are dry now. And then let's put in some detail around our houses. So I'm going to say there's a bit of a tree back here. And then there is actually, there's a bush, isn't there? Or some kind of hedge. And I'm dotting, I'm dotting paint on and I'm leaving white areas. I might just put some shadow on that tree too. I'm not painting things. Right. And now there's quite an important. Let's put this let's put this tree in around this side of the house. Put a bit of I'm just putting some colour here because I feel it needs it. It's not because there is a hedge or anything there. I just I just don't want that expansive house. So some little dips, dits and dots and dibby dabbies. Now, that there, I want some colour, I've just used my remaining bit of roof colour with my green to make a brown, just to put something in here, there may be too many white marks, you can always go in afterwards and take out the white marks. Maybe a little too, a little too loose. Maybe there's a wall back here, isn't there? I'm going to paint that in. Just one mark. I'm going to stand back and see how that reads. 
it's maybe it's, I think it's a little too loose. Yeah, but it's okay. It's okay. These white marks are probably too white, but when it's dry, go back in and glaze it a little. Uh, just to take some of those whites out and also to put some shadows on these roofs and houses and that will improve things enormously. Right, now, I mean, we're, we're getting very close. Uh, we just need to tidy things up a bit. Let's, let's have another, let's, let's finalise these background trees. The colour's good, I like the colour, I just think they need a little more depth to them, which means another layer of a very dark green. This is almost, this is almost black back here. Just to put another layer of depth to our trees. Now there's a dark, there's a dark line pretty much the whole way across here. I mean, careful to get around my bales. Don't give us just take away those at least some of those white pieces and then this tree here the light is coming from over here so our shadows are going to be on this side I'm just going to be very careful not to lose the irregularity of your trees because once you've lost that irregularity, you just can't get it back again because they're spherical. Or you just make them huge, which doesn't work either. Right, I'm just putting bits of dark where I think the shadow will be. So I think we need that white bit there. And using this dark to create some really subtle value changes. I really love subtle value changes in watercolour. And it's why I like breaking it down into these big shapes and just, just slightly changing the values within each shape. Bit of smoothing on there, I think. To do it, you do have to be pretty good at one identifying values and mixing up paint of the right value. It's it's a very useful skill to have. All right, I'm hoping I'm not getting too dibby dabby there. No, I think I'm okay. This bit in here, I'm going to switch to a, a, a synthetic pointy brush, my favourite one for detail. It's um, an Escoda Perla number 12 and it's, it's synthetic but they have really long bristles and a superb point to them and so you can really get some beautiful calligraphic marks in there. So, oh, and, the, and the, the reason I like it as a synthetic for detail is because it doesn't hold that much water. And so you can get those very precise dry marks that are hard to get with sable. Right, now let's put in, let's darken up. I just want to put a bit more contrast around these houses. I need to put some shadows on there too, which I should have done beforehand. Just putting some kind of graphic dots just to give the impression of leaf around there. And I'm looking at the photo. I'm hoping my, my nose is getting in the way, sorry. Um, it does have a tendency to do that. Now I might take away some of these white marks. Just think there's too many of them. It's, it's quite surprising how few white marks you need. And so there's this huge 
white splodged it, which I think we'll probably have to go at some point. It can stay there for now. Just some really calligraphic lines. Just to give the impression there's something back there. And it's probably house related, but you can't quite see what it is. And this one. Again, you can use the side of the brush. Mm, that work? I might make that slightly taller. I'm getting into regular territory where I start making trees like little green lollipops and I don't want to do that. Mm. And as I go through doing this, I'm, caref I'm, I'm trying to be careful to keep the envelope I already have for these trees and just pretty much go around the inside, occasionally just a little couple of dots just just poking outside but most of the time I'm just going on the inside now here we've got a hedge which I kind of like so I'm going to put that in it's dark here there's a dark strip and then a very small lighter area on the top just showing the top of the hedge I need a little water. I hope this is making sense to people. This is one of the it's one of the parts of the painting that's really personal and you can't really describe what you're doing and it's kind of painting by instinct. I kind of like that though. Oh, yes. It's a bit of dark here. Right, before I move on, those white things are going to have to go. I want to put some shadows on the side of the house. You see that hedge has worked really well. It's just that very slight value change between that bottom layer and our top layer gives such a great sense of depth, but doesn't destroy the whole composition by putting in too much contrast. It's awesome, it's awesome. Right, okay, quick palette clean. some shadows on the sides of the house. Uh, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to decide what to do with that at the end. I've got some shadows just to separate the roofs. Uh, we need to decide whether to punch up the shadows on these bales. I think they probably do. This white piece is annoying me. We need to do something with that. Not much, but we do need to do something with it, right? Let's, let's look at the size of these houses. So I'm going to make the shadows Fairly blue, I think. So a bit of cerulean, just a little bit of burnt umber to grey it down. And it's just a, basically a single wash over each side. Yeah. Uh, switch to my synthetic again. And just a little bit of colour underneath the eaves. Now, a standard grey, which is ultramarine and burnt sienna, not too dark. I'm just single stripes to separate these roofs here. And just a little line underneath the eaves, just to give it a bit of yeah. and 
tempted to put some windows in there, but that might be a bridge too far. I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, yeah, no more though. Right, okay, I'm going to just wash over this. It doesn't need much, just a small wash of grey is enough just to take the edge off it. This line needs some attention though. It's going to be a slightly darker grey. Uh, maybe that's too dark. So put a line in to... <clears throat> it's drawing the eye too much and I don't like it. All right, and soften that edge, maybe a little softening on the top. Right, so if my nose is poking through, I'm leaning over the paper a bit too much. Uh, did I miss that? Just take that off. Right, yeah, that's drawing the eye too much. Okay, right, stand back. Ah, uh, it's okay. No, I've taken too much white out. Ah. Okay, two things. And these will be the last two things we need to do. I'm going to darken up this, this, maybe not this one, but certainly these, definitely. So we're going to need a light wash of uh, probably a brownish grey. So some ultramarine and burnt sienna are standard grey mix, but push it slightly towards burnt sienna side and it shouldn't be too dark so this is kind of that's too brown oh, is it too blue now mm, let's try that it should be a uh, light cream kind of consistency maybe even maybe towards milk i just want to put a slight wash over these not to make them hugely darker just to punch them up slightly. They're going to look dark when it goes on because it's wet. And I'm just going to soften those sides just to bring that colour up a little bit because they are round. Just a little bit here. point of the painting where I don't actually really know whether it's working. I've seen it too much and sometimes you finish a painting and you hate it and then you come back the next morning or a couple of days later and you think actually no that's, that's I really like that and sadly it works the other way too. You finish a painting you think you're the bee's knees, you think it's fantastic and then you come in the next morning and you go oh dear no. Oh no. No, 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 no. So, I don't know what this one is going to be. And I think that, that front one does have to have a little bit of. I, I'm going to put a little bit of. I'm going to try. Oh, famous last words. A little bit of orange at the top here. <gasps> Oh, I don't put the line. So, well, maybe I shouldn't have done that now. And then the dark down the bottom, which I don't have any of. Uh, working quickly. I'm just darkening up part of this. I 
think it does need a little more punch, a little more contrast. I do, I do like the subtlety of slight value changes, but sometimes it's not enough. And I just put a little bit of cadmium orange at the top there. I'm just looking at the, I'm looking at the bales, and I think they do have a bit of just a slight slight bit of lightness up there. I'm standing back. Right, I think, I think we're almost, almost there. The final thing that we have to put in is really quite important though. And if we do it right, it really, it really makes the whole picture sing. I can't get my face on that. Here we go. Right. Here we go. It's these shadows here. They tie the bales together. They give a little bit of uh, value contrast um, in the area, in that kind of detailed shape. But we need to get them the right colour, the right value. They can't be too dark because they will look weird. They can't be too light, otherwise they won't be seen at all. So, no pressure. I would measure, let's measure. I'm having trouble with my photo because I know my painting's wet and I don't want to put it down on it. It's fairly dark back there. But it's not as dark, it's not as dark as here just trying to find something on this. So it's it's dark, but it's not as dark as here. I'm just trying to find something on the, where else? It's kind of like the mid, the mid value there. Well, I'm gonna need a brownish wash and it should be fairly, let's clean this up and do this from scratch. should be fairly watery. I want it to go on quite fluidly. So we're not going to be putting on opaque paint. All right. Okay. So that is probably close to the right color. It's too thick and maybe slightly bluer. That's going to be too dark. So I'm going to add in some water to make it, yeah, it's kind of that's milk consistency and I'm hoping that will be the right colour. Now it's hard to test with a swatch because it's going to go over this ochre colour. Um, I'm going to leave my photo to know where to put it. So they're, they're straight but they're not horizontal. Uh, the shadows are slightly angled because the sun is slightly angled, so they should be at the same angle as these little pieces we put in here. And we need to work out where to put them so it goes through the bales. I'm just going to make that slightly. I'm getting. Um, I'm losing my bottle. All right. I'm going to. I'm not going to do this bit back here. I'm going to make sure these ones through here are. It's not going to be too dark. You see, I, I'm, I'm making it, if this dries too light, I should kick myself. Right, that brush isn't going to work. <sighs> That's not going to work here. Right, I'm pulling that across. goes all the way across here. Right now it's going to extend this back. Now I know I've got that bit right. I'm going to extend this back. And it, it basically covers the whole, the whole part here. This one is poking out into the sun. So I'll go around that one. But it'll be shadow back there. And a few more pulls out just to show the shadow 
I'm kind of going by the photo, but not necessarily. There's some extra pulls out. And it's got some more back here. I'm trying to get. Okay, I'm going to stand back. I don't think I've messed up that too badly. No, I'm happy with that. Whew. That's quite stressful, that bit. I hope that was clear what I was trying to do there. Just so it touches the other one there. Right. Whew. Almost there. Almost there. These are still looking quite dark, but I think it's because they're wet. And once they dry, I think I'll be good. The last thing I want to do is just... I think there was actually not enough interest back there. There's some nice little sparkles. Just some dibs and dabs. But I want to put a bit more white back into that just to give that a bit more interest so get my favourite white out I'm just picking up some colour from these I guess. Oh, if I could do Right, okay, leave that. This is, uh, you could use white gouache, um, angle it properly, but I use this Dr. P.H. Martin's bleed proof white because gouache, it goes on and looks fine, but then it dries uh, grey. This is much more opaque. It probably breaks all sorts of rules about watercolour, but tough. Now I'm just going to put in some, just some slight. Slight white mark. I don't want to overdo this. Just to give it a bit more interest back. What do I mean by interest? Well, variation, I suppose I mean. Variation. Some sparkles and these ones that I took away and I'm going to put back in again. And these again, these aren't the things I'm painting. Something I can't I can't think what it is. I think I'm going to stop there because otherwise I'm going to I'm going to ruin it. She says, and I always do this going back in again. Right, stop. <clears throat> okay. Now, anything else? <sighs> I'm tempted to put some chimneys on those roofs. Hey. 
No, I think I should I should quit while I'm fairly happy. And I think I am fairly happy. This green is probably a little too bright, but I think the painting's finished. So I hope that made sense to people. Um, and I hope you can see that the way we broke this down into simple shapes with not a lot of detail, and then just had this, this middle shape with all the detail in, you just don't need it around here. This is just a piece of green that's painted. I mean, these are just very simple two layer trees. And but as soon as you put some, some, just some high contrast areas in, the whole thing really pulls together. This foreground turned out well as well. It's, um, it seemed very dark when we were doing it, but now um, I think it works well. It leads you into the picture. It's got texture, but it's it doesn't draw the eye away from what's actually going on up here. Okay, I'm happy. I hope it was useful for people. Thank you.